Tasha Keeney again, Director of Investment Analysis and Institutional Strategies at ARC. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of our big ideas from our 2023 presentation. Please check out the full deck on our website. Um, but right now we're going to talk about autonomous logistics. So before I get into things, there are risks of investing in innovation that all investors should be aware of, that you, the listener, should be aware of. Um, know that we do try to take these risks into account when we model and estimate future market sizes. All right, autonomous logistics. Um, so we think that autonomous technology will not just change how we as people get around, but also of how our goods get around and get to us in e-commerce. So um, this includes uh, many different form factors. In fact, we think there'll be form factors that exist in the future um, that we don't see today, different shapes and sizes of machines for purpose-built applications that, you know, maybe we couldn't even dream of right now, but in the future, um, they'll fit sort of the precise applications that are needed for specific pain points in the logistics system. At ARC, we focused on three of them primarily for now, uh, trucks, drones, and robots um, that address, you know, the middle and the last mile of logistics. So based on our assumptions, we think that autonomous logistics revenue could scale from roughly nothing today to about one to two trillion dollars in 2030. And delivery charges could be as inexpensive as 20 cents all the way up to um, $10. If you take a look here at the different form factors, um, you know, starting with the largest, we think that an autonomous electric truck could price at three cents per 10 mile. That's uh, less than half the cost of a human driven diesel truck today. Um, for local batch delivery, this is a robot that travels in integrated traffic. Importantly, it's not a sidewalk robot. It travels on the road with cars, might be a little smaller than a car, but it's purpose built for, uh, to carry the packages that are inside of it. And we're looking at a specific use case here. So this is grocery delivery. Um, if you drive yourself to the grocery store, first of all, you're probably not getting paid for it, but it probably also cost you about two to three dollars just for that journey. Um, a robot could deliver those groceries to you for about 40 cents per trip. So six to seven times uh, less expensive than today's human in the loop options. Lastly, Local small item delivery costs. This is a drone. This is for last mile delivery. Um, if you look at the most comparable option, which is an app-based delivery service, that, that's the instant delivery that gets you something in less than an hour. Um, that could be five to six dollars to get something to your door. A drone could do it for just 25 cents. Um, so this will be extremely inexpensive. It'll likely change the way you shop. Um, and we're gonna get into that later. So starting backwards here with drones, ultimately we think um, drones could deliver you both uh, parcels and food, uh, that's food in the forms of meals, restaurant delivery. And um, you know, similar to autonomous ride hail, we think that this technology will have the most dramatic effect in countries that have um, more expensive delivery options today. So you can see looking across um, parcels here, uh, countries that have you know fees that are as high as nine to ten dollars, all the way down to um, places like uh, China and India, where it's you know two dollars or less for parcel delivery. Drones will still be um, by far and large a less expensive option, um, but they will be uh, dramatically less expensive in countries with high fees. And same thing for food or meal delivery. Um, we see prices of five to ten dollars today. Uh, if you look at Ham Amazon, Whole Foods, DoorDash, Uber Eats, all the way down to less than a dollar um, for Miss Fresh in China. Um, of course, drones will still be less expensive, um, but again, more, more dramatic in, in countries with higher fees. And for real-time delivery, that delivery that you get in a specific window, you know, let's say less than an hour, um, we expect this could be a one to two trillion dollar addressable market in 2030. We've done an analysis similar to what we've done for ride hail, looking at price points um, based on uh, the price support that we see from today's market options, all the way down to that 20 to 40 cents per trip option that we think will be unlocked with autonomous delivery options. 
And this is the point at which we expand the delivery market, you know, past what we see today in, in parcel and food delivery. Um, so this will be, you know, it, it'll give many people access to inexpensive delivery that may not currently have it today. And it, it could cause you to order things more often, order things in smaller quantities um, because they'll be delivered by a drone or robot uh, for less than a dollar. And actually, our estimates for drone delivery are larger than we had initially expected. Um, so we expect the delivery fees generated off of uh, parcel delivery um, could be as high as $500 billion. And for meal delivery, it could be um, roughly $200 billion by 2030. That's about five times greater than we previously estimated. Um, this is because the up of the updated pricing analysis that we have done, again, looking at the price support that we see from today's delivery options, Early on, we expect higher prices to come in in the initial days of robots and, and adoption um, all the way down to that 20 cents estimate. Um, and drones could actually carry a meaningful portion of volume. So we think they could carry more than um, half of the $20 trillion in e-commerce and the $2 trillion that we see um, in meal purchases in 2030. Moving on to robots. Um, so for grocery delivery, um, right now, online or e-commerce accounts for roughly 6% of grocery sales globally. This is our estimate. It's as high as 20% in places like China, but globally, on average, roughly 6% of groceries are ordered online. The interesting thing here is this is not equivalent to what is delivered. So actually, in the U.S., um, of those online orders, uh, people are still choosing to pick up their groceries 30 to 40 percent of the time. You can imagine that this is the first part of the market that goes to autonomous delivery because this is going to be a lot more convenient and inexpensive than you going to the store yourself to pick it up. Um, so this could be, you know, an immediate win in that case. And ultimately, we think that robot grocery delivery could generate about $40 billion in fees in the next 10 years by 2030. That may sound like a relatively small market opportunity, but I want to highlight that this will completely change the dynamics for, first of all, the companies that are offering groceries and e-commerce. Um, autonomous delivery will give you a significant competitive advantage over peers. And also, again, we think that robots could capture a meaningful portion of the volume of delivered goods. Um, so we think in 2030, e-commerce could capture about 35% of the 11 trillion grocery market globally, and robots could account for more than half of those deliveries. So $40 billion in fees, but carrying um, trillions, dollar, trillions um, in goods. And looking at real-time delivery, so this is both uh, robots and drones, we think uh, all in all, uh, $700 billion in fees could be generated in 2030. Um, companies that are working on this are far and wide. They range from Domino's to Walmart to Alibaba, JD in China, Meituan, um, Amazon Prime Air, Neuro, Google Wing. Um, again, this is an earlier stage market than the autonomous car space. Um, and there are many looking to tackle this opportunity. And you can see why. In the middle mile part of the logistics supply chain, autonomous trucks will likely dominate. So an autonomous electric truck, as I said, could price at three cents per 10 mile. That's less than half the cost of a human driven diesel truck, but importantly, it's also cheaper than rail. And rail and trucks are roughly tied for ton mileage. So in the US, it's about a 60-40 relationship, um, but you can imagine that a lot more goods will travel over the truck market than currently do today. Um, that will have really wide ranging effects. Of course, it actually might cause more damage to our roads. Um, ultimately, we think that you know this will be convenient as it offers a point to point, an ex inexpensive point to point solution for goods delivery. Um, but if you look at um, the rail industry and the amount of money that's spent on um, you know, maintaining and investing in that infrastructure. Globally, that's over a trillion dollars per year. And China actually accounts for more than half of that total. 
Um, so the, the fixed assets that are in rail are at risk in this transition. And countries that are investing a lot more in the rail network um, you know, might feel this uh, more heavily than other countries. Global autonomous delivery revenue could total $1 to $2 trillion by 2030. This includes the last mile real-time delivery options that could total $700 billion, as well as autonomous trucks, trucks, which could total about $800 billion in gross revenue in 2030. This will totally change our shopping habits, as I said. You know, you might not choose to have a pantry anymore because you're ordering groceries delivered every day by a robot. It's that convenient and inexpensive. You do more trips um, and you buy less in bulk. Um, you could, of course, transition more to e-commerce. Maybe you stop going to stores entirely. It's just much more convenient to order everything online, every, every last piece. So um, this will change the logistics supply chain and reshape things for sure, but this will also have a dramatic impact on consumers. It should allow for more money in consumers' pockets as they save on delivery fees. For more research, check out arc-invest.com. Thanks again for listening.